hello uh, welcome to my youtube channel as i have already introduced myself i am orindam ghosh assistant professor in the department of english krishna chandra college hetampur bigum and uh, i was teaching you marxism this is actually my eighth video uh, on the marxist uh, series uh, eighth video on the series and uh, i was talking about the frankfurt school and discussed with you uh, conceptions like uh, negative dialectics culture industry i have discussed with you theodor adorno's work especially the very important work dialectic of enlightenment and i have discussed with you the theory of the pseudo individualization and uh, showed you that how uh, these marxist critics uh, hated uh, the commercial culture specifically the culture propounded by the mass media and the popular culture i have also discussed with you adorno's conception of the philosophy of music where he clearly declared that he hated the jazz music uh, because uh, perhaps it created a kind of a chief form of art uh, which uh, actually reduces uh, the uh, the desire for revolution on the part of the general public so uh, after discussing adorno's uh, conception of the negative dialectics i am entering into uh, another very important proponent of uh, frankfurt school harbert marcuse so frankfurt school was a school which was located in uh, frankfurt germany main germany and uh, then later it got transported into new york around 1933 Uh, the original school was named as institute of social research frankfurt then uh, it uh, actually transported itself to uh, new york due to some uh, extreme political turmoil in germany uh, these thinkers uh, actually exiled themselves and uh, in the previous lecture in the first lecture on the frankfurt school i have discussed adorno and hartheimer and today i will discuss uh, harbert marcus uh, of course walter benjamin and urian habermas many people excludes uh, habermas and benjamin from the mainstream frankfurt school but their work uh, has been funded by the institute of social research and there is a direct influence of adorno and marcus on them so who was harbert marcus harbert marcus was a german american philosopher sociologist political theorist Uh, associated with the Frankfurt School, and between 1943 and 1950, Marcuse actually worked under the Office of the Strategic Services in the United States, and he criticized the ideology of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in his book *Soviet Marxism: A Critical Analysis*. As I am already saying, that there is a great leap between the classical Marxist thinking and the Western Marxist thinking. so in his studies in the 1960s and 70s uh, he became known as the preeminent theorist of the new left and the student movements in the west germany though he himself denigrated that thing and said that the student revolution uh, began uh, uh, much more earlier uh, than his uh, thought so his best known works are eros and civilization a very famous book and one dimensional man published in 1964 his marxist scholarship inspired many radical intellectuals and political activists in the 1960s and 70s in the united states and internationally now this book one dimensional man is perhaps the most famous book by harbert marcus i have discussed uh, about this book uh, in the previous lecture uh, in a very small amount but uh, in this particular lecture i will try to elaborate so in this book the author offers a wide ranging critic of both the contemporary capitalism and the communist society of the soviet union uh, as i was saying that a recurrent pattern of the great critique against the uh, contemporary mass media the contemporary uh, uh, market capitalism can be found uh, in the works of the frankfurt school and uh, this book actually documented the parallel rise of the new forms of the social repression in uh, both the society of america as well as the soviet union what's his main argument in this book he argues that advanced industrial society 
created various forms of false needs false needs এটা বাংলা করা যেতে পারে যে জিনিসটার আমার প্রয়োজন নেই মার্কেট ইকোনমির সমস্ত জিনিস তো আমার প্রয়োজন নেই যেটা আমার প্রয়োজন নেই সেটার প্রয়োজন হবে এরকম একটা ফলস নিড থ্রু ভ্যারিয়াস ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টস লাইক অ্যাডভার্টাইজমেন্ট অ্যান্ড আদার লিউক্রেটিভ কমার্শিয়ালস দ্য ক্যাপিটালিস্ট সোসাইটি উইল আর্টিফিশিয়ালি জেনারেট দিজ ফর্মস অফ ফলস নিডস সো অ্যাকর্ডিং টু হারবার্ট মার্ক ইউজ he strongly criticizes consumerism and modern industrial society which he claims is basically a forms of social control because it will control your own mind and this form of false needs will eventually result in the one dimensional universe of thought and behavior in which aptitude and ability for critical thought and oppositional behavior will eventually wither away it will uh, uh, eventually disappear and against this prevailing climate marcus promotes the great refusal as the only adequate opposition as the only alternative solution that one should resist one should actually refuse these forms of acute commercialization ei bhoyongkor banijjikoroner prithibite ei industrial product bikri korar je bibhinna dhoroner market technique take rukhe dewar jonno কোট আনকোট গ্রেট রিফিউজাল টেকনিক নেওয়ার কথা হারবার্ট মার্কিউজ বলেছিলেন তার দ্য ওয়ান ডাইমেনশনাল ম্যান এই বইতে দিস ইজ বেসিক্যালি আ ডিফেন্স অফ আ নেগেটিভ থিঙ্কিং অ্যাজ আ ডিসরাপ্টিং ফোর্স এগেনস্ট দ্য প্রিভেলিং পজিটিভিজম সো অ্যাজ আই ওয়াজ সেইং ইন দ্য প্রিভিয়াস লেকচার দ্যাট অ্যাডোর্নোজ কনসেপশন অফ নেগেটিভ ডায়ালেকটিক্স ইজ বেসিক্যালি নেগেটিং অ্যানাদার নেগেটিভ so that one a positive thinking can be generated so uh, this positivism though is different this positivistic thinking actually mean, means one dimensional thinking it means uh, thinking only through reason and logic but uh, marcus uh, is saying that you should uh, actually build a great atmosphere of resistance and great atmosphere of refusal in order to uh, deny the derogatory effect of the capitalist society so the full title of one dimensional man was studies in the ideology of advanced industrial society published in 1964 he put forth the conception of repressive desublation this is an important word this can be uh, uh, in your two marks or five marks question now what is uh, desublation what is a uh, sublimation okay uh, d- uh, uh, sorry uh, repressive desublimation so what is uh, sublimation sublimation means uh, something higher impulse some impulse that can create sublimity in my own mind the impulse of almost a form of divine and transcendental experience amar moner moddhe ek dhoroner adbhut anondo acceleration ek dhoroner pray oishorik আনন্দ আমি ফিল করছি তো দ্যাট ইজ দ্যাট ক্যান বি কলড অ্যাজ সাবলিমেশন দো দ্য ওয়ার্ড সাবলাইন হ্যাজ বিন ইউজ বাই মেনি স্কলার্স ইন ডিফারেন্ট ওয়েজ লং জাইনাস অন দ্য সাবলাইন ইউজ সাবলাইন দ্য ওয়ার্ড সাবলাইন ইন দ্য রেটোরিক্যাল কনটেক্স বাট সাবলিমেশন মিনস সাম ফর্ম অফ এক্সিলারেশন সাম ফর্ম অফ ডিভাইন ট্রান্সেন্ডেন্টাল এক্সপিরিয়েন্স সো দি সাবলিমেশন ইজ বেসিক্যালি পুটিং সাবলিমেশন ইন টু দি ভার্স turning higher impulses back into our drives amade drive mane hocche amader je somosto probitti amader apashobik probitti sei probittite rupantorito kora amader sublimation gulo ke amader kebol matro drive mane hocche amader satisfaction of physical and emotional gratification amader immediate je need shegulo ke gratify korte shegulo je drive amar khub kenar icche hocche kono jinish oneke dekhbe kinei choleche jinish potro কোনো প্রয়োজন নেই কিন্তু অ্যামাজন থেকে কিনেই চলেছে কোনো প্রয়োজন নেই কিন্তু দ্যাটস অলমোস্ট কাইন্ড অফ ইনটক্সিকেশন সো এই যে মার্কেট ড্রিভেন ড্রাইভ এই যে ফলস নিড ক্রিয়েশন তার কথা এখানে হারবার্ট মার্ক ইউজ বলতে চেয়েছেন সো ইজ দেয়ার এনিথিং ইন আওয়ার সোসাইটি দ্যাট উড মেক দিস হ্যাপেন অ্যান্ড হি সেট দ্যাট ইটস রিপ্রেসিভ the the, the disabling the disabilitation is repressive because it stops people from questioning kono dhoroner proshno manush pore na market er commercialization culture industry je culture industry 
তাই নিয়ে যে কোনো প্রশ্ন তোলা হয় না এই যে প্রশ্ন না তোলা অ্যান্ড হেন্স মার্ক ইউজ কলস দিস অ্যাজ রিপ্রেসেড বিকজ ইট স্টপস পিপল ফ্রম কোয়েশ্চেন অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইট রিপ্লেসেস ফ্রিডম উইথ অ্যাপেটাইটস ইট ইনফেন্টালাইজেস আস and turns her into into basically big children because uh, it actually increases basically our desire for buying and politics becomes a spectator sport in this situation economic will economic well being becomes the main goal and having it now amare khuni chai we place us fighting for a better world so and hence uh, this form of market economy is deeply ideological according to marcus because it is in replete with the false ideas false needs false goals and false consciousness this shreni chetanar kotha marx bolchen it has been replaced with this form of false consciousness and we are constantly being manipulated and it prevents all forms of social change so marx uses in his philosophy talks about this repressive desublimation that is a form of control over your buying power it actually uh, uh, almost compels you to buy something so it uh, cartels your freedom and replaces your freedom with your appetites another very important uh, frankfurt school thinker is max horkheimer horkheimer wrote jointly along with tw adorno uh, uh, the book called the dialectic of enlightenment he was a german philosopher and sociologist famous for his work in the critical theory a member of the frankfurt school i have already mentioned and uh, in collaboration with adorno he wrote the dialectic of enlightenment other famous books uh, of him include the eclipse of reason horkheimer uh, saw society as a totality which is continuously restructuring itself especially the capitalism and the capitalist market is continually restructuring itself and as a result the idea of a social absolute that is a complete or perfect state of social phenomena has been criticized by horkheimer horkheimer actually criticized the marxist monolithic conception of the state and he said that there is nothing uh, called social absolute universal eternal bole kichu hoy na sob kichu ke criticize kora jete pare and the entire society is constantly changing uh, with the, uh, the the constantly changing social phenomena so there are no general criteria for critical theory as a whole critical theory actually aims to assess the breach between the idea and the reality now we come to eugen habermas another famous german philosopher and sociologist who for the first time addresses the two concepts which are very important for us Uh, one is uh, the concept of the communicative rationality and another is the idea of the public sphere associated with uh, communicative rationality what is a communicative rationality so according to habermas communication through language necessarily involves the raising of the validity claims so uh, what are validity claims validity claims can be uh, described as a uh, truth for example rightness sincerity etc so if we communicate with people uh, this form of language communication will eventually uh, raise questions like right wrong sincerity truth etc the status of which when contested can ultimately only be resolved through discussion and habermas further contains that speakers of a language possess an implicit knowledge of the conditions under which such discussion would produce an objectively correct result because the speaker who is engaging himself or herself in this form of communication or discussion will ultimately know that whether a correct result will appear in through this discussion whether uh, 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 various validity claims like truth like rightness like sincerity is appearing through this discussion or not and these he has spelled out in terms of the features of an egalitarian ideal speech situation he said that this is an ideal speech situation jekhane alochonar madhye kono samasyar positive samadhan shombhob only through discussion he called this 
an egalitarian ideal speech situation where the society believes uh, in a form of equality. It believes in a form of justice. He said that communicative rationality refers to the capacity to engage in argumentation under conditions approximating to this ideal situation or discourse. He said that this form of communicative rationality is very much es essential in achieving any kind of consensus in the society. Samajer Muddhe, Akbaroner consensus, Vakta Alachunar, Judin Gonada Shidhante, Upuni to the Chai, Talamar consensus, Chai, Protekir, Ake, Oporir, Shonge Shahomot, Poshon Koshe, Shahomote, Punchonota, Kubi Proja. And Habermas relies on the concept of the communicative rationality to argue that democratic forms of social organization express more than simply preference of a particular cultural and political tradition. So Habermas said that this is a very important feature of any kind of public sphere. So public sphere can only be constructed through this form of communicative rationality when a society achieved a form of uh, consensus, achieved a form of consensus uh, 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 in creating an egalitarian and ideal speech situation. So uh, here are some of the very important critical terms which is important in discussing the uh, critical theory of the Frankfurt School and they are first is uh, critical theory itself I've discussed you the definition and scope of critical theory questioning everything through the critical lens it is different from the traditional theory in the sense that critical theory is uh, subjective critical theory is essentially uh, anti-rational and anti-empiricist in nature and it questions the conception of the negative dialectics i said uh, already i've discussed with you the conception of the standardization pseudo individualization culture industry a very important concept that can be uh, actually in a five marks question false consciousness which is connected with the notion of the pseudo individualization and of course the conception of the one dimensional man and repressive desublimation which i have discussed now and communicative rationality these are some of the important terms uh, discussed by the critics of the Frankfurt School. So there are certain, of course, uh, criticism of Frankfurt School that can be cited here. First, critics of the Frankfurt School analysis of the popular culture have argued that it is just too negative and too sweeping in its characterization of the cultural products and cultural practices as tools of capitalism because as i was saying that there can be various pockets of resistance there can be various macro narratives that can be even hidden uh, in these tools of capitalism the facebook social media is a is can clearly be called uh, as a as a tool of capitalism can clearly be called as a cultural product uh, which is negative but at the same time uh, ami uh, Facebook through the on a thorough proti bada gotta but yet a capitalist society against it on a show to a have a on a cultural product which has been created and manufactured by the capitalism itself shit a power for get a barrier for substituting for resisting capitalism so uh, it is difficult to find evidence amongst today's consumers of popular culture of the unqualified conformity that Adorno and Horkheimer argued. The unqualified conformity ba pura puri chok bondo kore bharsha kora pura puri capitalism ka chini yege surrender kore deva etao kintu ajgal ka consumer aonek shumai kore na aamra kini dekhte bai aonek khetri responsible consumer ke. So it would be just as easy to find evidence of diversity, creativity and even resistance to dominant ideology in contemporary popular cultural pursuits rock music jazz music in fact they have been created as form of resistance against uh, one form of dominant ideology we will be very the classical music and the grand narrative and the runner form of grand narrative did it through the only encounter for she did I mean counter for she jazz music there for it Either in popular culture pursuit and more the creativity, diversity, fired uh, 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 cultural reflection, a shabby power to the party. For the Frankfurt School, air.
অনেক থিওরে কি থিওরি কি অনেকে ওভার জেনারেলাইজেশন বলতে পারে বলতে পারে দে হ্যাভ ট্রাই টু আন্ডারমাইন দ্য পপুলার কালচার অ্যান্ড দে ট্রাই টু বিল্ড অ্যানাদার গ্র্যান্ড ন্যারেটিভ উই ক্যান কল টি ডাব্লিউ অ্যাডোনোজ কনসেপশন অফ দ্য পিউরিটি অফ দ্য ক্লাসিক্যাল মিউজিক অ্যাজ আ ফর্ম অফ গ্র্যান্ড ন্যারেটিভ সো মুভিং ফ্রম হারবার্ট মার্ক ইউজ টু ওয়াল্টার বেরিয়ামেন অ্যান্ড আই থিঙ্ক ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য মোস্ট ওরিজিনাল থিঙ্কার্স অফ ফ্র্যাঙ্কফার্ট স্কুল মেনি ক্রিটিক্স উইল নট কনসিডার হিম অ্যাজ আ পার্ট অফ দ্য ফ্র্যাঙ্কফার্ট স্কুল বাট হি ইজ রিয়েলি এ গ্রেট ওরিজিনাল থিঙ্কার হু ওয়াল্টার সাম অফ দ্য বেসিক ফিলোসফিজ রিগার্ডিং এস্থেটিক্স লিটারেচার অ্যান্ড ফিলোসফি ফ্রম এইটিন নাইনটি টু টু নাইনটিন ফোর্টি হি ওয়াজ এ জার্মান জিউিশ ফিলোসফার কালচারাল ক্রিটিক অ্যান্ড এসাইস্ট হি ওয়াজ অ্যান এক্লেকটিক থিঙ্কার হি কম্বাইন্ড এলিমেন্টস অফ জার্মান আইডিয়ালিজম elements of gw f hegel and immanuel kant is there in him uh, along with it he combined the idea of romanticism western marxism and jewish rabbinical mysticism so benjamin made enduring and influential contributions uh, to the aesthetic theory literary criticism and of course historical materialism he was associated with frankfurt school uh, in the sense that Uh, there was a great friendship with adorno and horkheimer we can see and uh, horkheimer and adorno also funded many projects of benjamin uh, through the uh, uh, the institute of social research and he was also a great friend of uh, bartold brecht and kabbalah scholar gashlom scholem whose influence can be detected clearly in benjamin's work among benjamin's uh, famous work we can cite the task of the translator the most famous often cited canonical work the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction i'll request all my students to go through this text this is a brilliant absolutely brilliant text and of course a much difficult thesis on the philosophy of history published in 1940 thesis on the philosophy of history and his major work as a literary critic included essays on Baudelaire, Goethe, Kafka, Cross, uh, Leskov, Proust and others. At the age of 48 in 1940, Benjamin committed suicide at Potbau on the French Spanish border while attempting to escape from the invading war match from the Weimar Republic. Uh, he committed suicide uh, while escaping from the Nazi forces at the age of 48. He was really a great eclectic thinker. now uh, we will discuss the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction it's an essay of cultural criticism which proposes that mechanical reproduction of a work of art actually devalues the aura of the artifacts uniqueness as an art so what is mechanical reproduction we have to understand first that what is mechanical reproduction any form of reproduction any form of copy through a uh, mechanical or any form of technology can be called mechanical reproduction for example if i xerox a page of uh, this particular book uh, it becomes a mechanical reproduction any form of art is actually uh, distributed and disseminated through the mechanical reproduction without it we will not be perhaps able to read shakespeare's macbeth karan jodi sheta kono din printing technology dara printed na hoto ওই গোটা পৃথিবীতে ছড়িয়ে না পড়ত তাহলে আমরা জানতে পারতাম না কিন্তু এই যে ইনভেনশন অফ দ্য প্রিন্টিং টেকনোলজি অ্যান্ড আদার থিংস এটা তো রেনের সমস্ত থেকে বিভিন্ন সময়ে হয়েই যাচ্ছে তাহলে বেঞ্জামিন হোয়াই বেঞ্জামিন কলিং দ্য ওয়ার্ক অফ আর্ট ইন দ্য এজ অফ মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন হোয়াট ইজ দ্য এজ অফ দ্য মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন পার হ্যাভস বেঞ্জামিন ইজ রেফারিং টু দ্য এজ অফ দ্য লেট নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরি অর দ্য বিগিনিং অফ দ্য টোয়েন্টি এথ সেঞ্চুরি অ্যাজ দ্য এজ অফ মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন where he is saying that a work of art uh, uh, is basically has some aura has some mystic atmosphere at a uh, literature at a cultural artifact prottektari at a particular social context thake at a nijoshyo authenticity thake at a aura thake at a mystical at a rahoshyomoy bola jete pare chador jeno sei work of art ke mure thake jeta for example macbeth er moddhe roeche আমি যদি ম্যাকবেথকে ডি কনটেক্সুয়ালাইজ করি করে 
এই সময়ে রিকনটেক্সুয়ালাইজ করি বা হঠাৎ করে ম্যাকবেথের মতো অন্য যে কোনো ওয়ার্ক অফ আর্টকে আবার অন্য রকমভাবে অন্য একটা কালচারে কনটেক্স না দেখে ছাপতে আরম্ভ করি বা বিক্রি করতে আরম্ভ করি তাহলে এসেন্সিয়ালি আই অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডিভ্যালুইং দ্য অর অফ দ্য আর্টিফ্যাক্টস ইউনিকনেস অফ আর্ট অ্যান্ড টু রিমেম্বার বেনিয়ামিন ইজ রাইটিং দিস এসে অ্যাট ডিউরিং দ্য নাজি রেজিম অ্যান্ড ডিউরিং দ্য নাজি রেজিম আমরা দেখতে পাই বা আলোচনা করলে আমরা জানতে পারব যে গোটা জার্মানি জুড়ে বিভিন্ন সময়ে বিভিন্ন ধরনের আর্টিস্টকে নিচ্ছে বলে এবং অন্যান্য ফিলোসফারকে মিস ইউজ করা হয়েছে তাদের ফিলোসফি তাদের আইডি ফর এক্সাম্পল নিচ্ছে যে আইডি অফ দ্য সুপারম্যানকে নাচিরা হিটলার মিস ইউজ করছে ফলে সেই কনটেক্সে দাঁড়িয়ে কিন্তু ওয়ার্ক অফ আর্ট ইন দ্য এজ অফ মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশান পড়তে হবে মেজামি বলছেন যে সেই সময়ে দাঁড়িয়ে মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশান অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডিভ্যালুজ দ্য অর অফ দ্য আর্টিফ্যাক্টস ইউনিকনেস অফ আর্ট অ্যান্ড ইউ রোড দ্য এস এ টু প্রডিউস এ থিওরি অফ দ্য আর্ট হুইচ ইজ ইউজফুল ফর দ্য ফর্মুলেশন অফ রেভলিউশনারি ডিমান্ডস ইন দ্য পলিটিক্স অফ আর্ট ইন দ্য মাস কালচার সোসাইটি অ্যান্ড হি ইজ টেলিং আস দ্যাট দ্য ইন দ্য এজ অফ দ্য মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন and the absence of traditional ritualistic value the production of art would be inherently based upon the praxis of the politics so he's fearing this form of politics where art can uh, uh, will produce eventually no value no uh, uh, moral message so in the discussion of the aura of authenticity and physical uniqueness benjamin said that even the most perfect reproduction of a work of art is lacking one element what is it that its presence in time and space its unique existence at the place where it happens to be macbeth is a text written uh, in the context of the uh, of elizabethan england it's a play about medieval scotland but at the same time it is written when the question the very question regarding the ability of the monarch the very question regarding the uh, 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 regarding uh, the relevance of the royalty is raising of, of, on that particular time so macbeth has its own unique importance in the context of the renaissance england at the same time we are uh, we have been introduced with a renaissance hero for the first time who do not believe in the stars who do not believe in the destiny in the same way benjamin is saying that the this uh, aura or authenticity the uniqueness which is associated with art uh, is uh, uh, will be lacking if art is mechanically being re- reproduced in all forms of societies amra chandni ba dharmotolate jokhon jai amra dekhte pai mona lisa r prochur painting choriye royeche ei footpath e college street er footpath diye hete gele hoyto andru warhol er ekta painting dekhte pabo kintu koyek jon intellectual manush sara তার যে কনটেক্সট তার যে সোশ্যাল পলিটিক্যাল হিস্ট্রি সেটা কি সবাই রিলেট করতে পারবে মোনালিসা কি সত্যি চাঁদনি চকের ফুটপাথে ওই ছবিটাকে কতটা কি মানাচ্ছে তা কি অরা বা অথেন্টিসিটি আদৌ থাকছে এই ধরনের প্রশ্নগুলো বেঞ্জামিন কিন্তু রেজ করেছেন ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ক অফ আর্ট দ্য ওয়ার্ক অফ আর্ট ইন দ্য এজ অফ মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন বইতে সো দেয়ার ফোর ইন স্যাড that the sphere of the authenticity is outside the technical sphere of the reproduction of artworks very important sphere of authenticity is outside of the technical sphere of the reproduction of artwork that uh, the reproduction of artwork will eventually not consider the question of the sphere of the authenticity it, it is uh, the outside of the discourse of the reproductive form so therefore the original work of art is an object the art independent of the copy and yet by changing the cultural context of where the art happens to be the mechanical copy diminishes the aesthetic value of the original work of art the mechanical work actually diminishes the original value of the art here we can see in this particular cover uh, if you zoom in you will see that uh, this is actually showing the spine of uh, benjamin's book uh, walter benjamin's the work of art in the mechanical reproduction it's actually showing this repetition is actually showing uh, uh, that uh, it's basically a copy this repetition of the spine actually showing the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction uh, the, the cover is actually the personification of the book itself so uh, in that way the aura the unique aesthetic 
authority of authority of a work of art is absent from the mechanically produced copy so mechanical reproduction of the art will eventually destroy this unique or a this unique aesthetic authority say as benjamin so uh, benjamin's work is concerned with production and of course with authenticity i am saying that aura means the customary historical role played by the work of art their ritual function in the legitimation of traditional social formation and uh, benjamin considering art as part of the production so when you mean was very much concerned with the impact of the art uh, of the uh, uh, impact of, of art impact of the mass technologies like uh, photography filming microfilming on the art because uh, uh, it will essentially uh, lead to the politicization of art and uh, producing art in very from one context to another uh, it will eventually create a form of the misrepresentation of art and he said that the aura of an object its uniqueness has been threatened so the social value of a work of art changes as a society change their value systems and despite the socio cultural effects of the mass produced reproduction art upon the aura of the original work of art benjamin said that the uniqueness of a art of art is inseparable from being embedded in the fabric of the tradition so this is a particular picture where we can see that the picture of uh, the mona lisa who is located right now in the louvre museum of france has been clicked by uh, many photographers ajke uh, 2020 saler hetompur ba dubrajpur ba shingure boshe ami kono dini mona lisa chobi dekhte petam na jodi na ei mechanical reproduction of art kono din hoto technological revolution eventually led us to a form of democratization in art তুমি আজকে বসে এখনও মনে হয় ছবি দেখতে পাচ্ছ বা আমি এরকম একটা পাওয়ার পয়েন্ট তৈরি করতে পারছি বিকজ অফ দিস মেকানিক্যাল প্রোডাকশন অফ আর্ট বাট অফকোর্স অ্যাজ বেনি আমি ইন ইজ সেইং দ্যাট দেয়ার ইজ আ ডেঞ্জার অফ অফ দিস কাইন্ড অফ টেকনোলজিক্যাল রেভলিউশন অফ ইউজিং অ্যান্ড মিস রিপ্রেজেন্টেটিং আর্ট ইন ডিফারেন্ট কন্টেক্স বাই কমপ্লিটলি ডিস্ট্রয়িং ইটস করা সেই যে ভয় সেই যে মিস ইউজ অফ দ্য আর্ট মিস ইউজ অফ দ্য টেকনোলজি সেটা থেকে যাবেই কিন্তু উইদাউট দিস ফর্ম অফ মেকানিক্যাল রিপ্রোডাকশন কোনো দিন আর্টিস্ট তার কাজকে তার অডিয়েন্স তার রিডারের কাছে পৌঁছে দিতে পারবে না উইদাউট দ্য হেল্প অফ দ্য টেকনোলজি সো আমি ব্যক্তিগতভাবে মনে করি যে বেনিয়ামিনের থিঙ্কিংয়ের বা ইন ইন দ্য সেন্স ফ্র্যাঙ্কফুট স্কুলের থিঙ্কিংয়ের মধ্যে এই লিমিটেশনটা থেকে গিয়েই ছিল যে মাস মিডিয়া মাস প্রোডাকশন মানে এসেন্সিয়ালি একটা ডেরি ডেরোগেটারি নেগেটিভ আসপেক্ট রয়েছে এটা এটার যে দিকে যে দেখার যে চেষ্টাটা সেটা প্রথম থেকে এই ধরনের মার্কস স্কুল সফরের মধ্যে খুব ভীষণভাবে ছিল বলে আমার মনে হয় অ্যানাদার ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট প্রোজেক্ট নোন অ্যাজ দ্য আর্কেডস প্রোজেক্ট ইটস এ ব্রিলিয়েন্ট প্রোজেক্ট টেকেন বাই বেনিয়ামিন uh it's, it, it was an unfinished project uh, written between 1927 and 1940 it's an enormous collection of writings on the city life of the paris in the 19th century and it was uh, this project was especially uh, concerned regarding the paris's iron and glass covered arcades jodi tumra keu dharmotolay jao ba hog market or new market jao tumra dekhbe this form of arcades so uh, it's actually a uh, arcades project was a city project uh, it, 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 it concerns regarding paris's iron and glass covered arcades and how uh, this form of architecture this city life actually changed uh, the contemporary aesthetics how it gave birth to planners planners are those city dwellers uh, who contemplated about the city who wrote about the city so some of the greatest artists like oscar wilde like james joyce like walt whitman uh, like of course baudelaire they were planners that are shoharer moddhe paris new york er moddhe ghure beriyeche city ke explore koreche they explored the night life of the city city ke samne theke dekheche city space ke uh, explore koreche and that eventually resulted in some of the finest 
uh, poetry and novels of our time. Uh, James Joyce kono din Paris er rastay ghure na beraito, tahole hoyto kono din Ulysses lekha hoto na, which is a, 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 almost a, 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 a cornerstone of modernist thinking published in 1922. So uh, these, this is actually a view of an arcade, an example of the characteristic architecture covered arcades in the 19th century Paris. So uh, Parisian arcades actually began to be constructed around the beginning of the 19th century and were sometimes destroyed as a result of the Baron Haussmann's renovation of Paris during the Second French Empire around uh, uh, 1870. So Benyamin actually linked them to the city's distinctive street life and saw them as uh, providing one of the habitats of Flanagan that is strolling in a locale to experience it. So arcade, a, 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 a particular form of market, a particular form of uh, city life eventually gave birth to the Flanagan, the city dweller, the stroller. Uh, or uh, in, 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 in the stroller in a local to experience this form of city life. And the Kota Bolchil and the Kota Shishum was the greatest artist, Raprothi of the Flan or Chilo. So uh, the city was the seedbed of Benjamin's Gothic Marxism. And Paris, its testing ground. The arcades would become just one of the five or six archetypal images of the psychosocial space of the 19th century Paris around which the project was organized and each paired with a particular thematically representative individual. So this is Flanor. Flanor means a stroller or a loafer, a vagabond, uh, who is located outside the orderly society uh, uh, and uh, he is a, an ambivalent figure of urban riches representing the ability to wander detached from the society with no other purpose than to be an acute observer of the society. So Flanagan has no other purpose other than being an acute observer of the society. Flanagan was a literary type from the 19th century France essential to any picture uh, regarding the streets of the Paris. So it was, uh, he was the man of leisure, the idler, the urban explorer, the connoisseur of the street. So it was actually Benny, I mean, drawing the poetry of Charles Baudelaire who made this figure the object of scholarly interest in the 20th century and as an emblematic archetype of the urban modern experience. These are some of the uh, pictures uh, representing the fan arts. This is Gustave uh, Calibo's Paris Street, rainy day, uh, 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 painted around 1877. So you can see a lot of the strollers uh, who are perhaps detached observers of the city life. And this is again Gustave Calibo's uh, La Ponte du Europe, uh, Oil on Canvas, uh, published in, uh, painted in 1876. Moving from uh, Benjamin's conception of the Flanagan, from his conception of the mechanical reproduction of art, we will now uh, talk about Benjamin's thesis on the philosophy of history or his criticism of the historical materialism. Well, uh, as I have said that Benjamin is a unique thinker. Uh, in his writing, we can see the influence of the rabbinical mysticism. We can see, of, of course, uh, Marxist history. And we also can see the influence of the modernism. So composed of some 20 paragraphs, the thesis, of, thesis on the philosophy of history is a brief essay, uh, which Benjamin wrote after attempting to escape from the Vichy France, where uh, the French collaborationalist government officials were handing over the ref Jews refugees like Benjamin to the Nazi Gestapo. So this is a, this, this particular essay actually critics Marx's conception of the historical materialism. And Benjamin is uh, suggesting that despite Karl Marx's claims to scientific objectivity, historical materialism is actually a quasi-religious fraud. And while uh, uh, telling uh, uh, us that Marx is almost a fraud star, uh, he is actually comparing uh, 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 Marx's conception of the historical materialism with the conception of the talk. What is the talk? 
Stark is actually an instrument. Agdoronet Jontro. So, Benjamin eventually called uh, the thesis of the historical materialism as a as a fraud star, and he compared this uh, the entire conception of the historical materialism with uh, this kind of instrument known as the Tark. What is Tark? Tark is a famous case playing device uh, of the 18th century. Uh, in this case playing device, an automata or a mechanical human who is a, who is a basically a doll uh, operates the entire machine and uh, he is playing actually uh, with uh, 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 another human but another dwarf human being is hidden in this machine who is playing uh, 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 in the place of this mechanical doll. So presented as an automaton that could defeat the skilled chase players the Tark actually concealed a human, allegedly a dwarf, who controlled this uh, machine. So, uh, so Benjamin said that this uh, this 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 kind of Tark, which is a uh, an uh, uh, an artificial chase playing device, has actually a hidden human uh, inside it. So he compared historical materialism with this Tark. Why? He said that. Historical materialism will eventually win in all forms of situations and Marx has presented this thing uh, almost deliberately because the conception of the progression of history which is the, uh, the core word of historical materialism with the, the, the entire conception of history as progress because history will eventually progress there are no other options left without progressing. For example, uh, our society, our civilization will eventually progress from the feudal society to the capitalist society, from primitive communism to feudalism. And eventually our capitalist society have transformed itself into liberal democracy, into multinationalism, multiculturalism. So this uh, entire form of history has progress. This antithesis of history as progress, Benjamin's critics' historical historicism in his in his rejection is his rejection is that of the past as a continuum of the progress. This is very much apparent in the thesis eleven, and he actually gave us an alternate vision of the past and progress. Is based represented in the thesis nine, where he employs are uh, the Paul Cleese painting. Angelus Novus, published in 1920, painted in 1920. This is the painting uh, of uh, Paul Klee called Angelus Novus. Uh, it, it is known as the Angel of History. So, why the Angel of History? Because if we closely analyze this painting, we will see that uh, we can see a kind of angel who is looking back or uh, looking back to us, or perhaps uh, he or she is looking into the future looking into the future uh, from the back because uh, we are not sure that whether this this wing uh, perhaps is suggesting that she or he is flying to this direction but she is looking back to us this is past or this is future we don't know so Benjamin said that uh, the angel of history with his back turned to the future where we see the appearance of a chain of events, he sees one single catastrophe, which unceasingly piles rubble on top of rubble and hurls it before his feet, that which we all call progress. This is the storm. So Benjamin said that history is actually not about progress. He criticizes historical materialism by seeing that, uh, he criticizes Marx for saying that uh, one innate contradiction inside a system will give rise to another uh, system because this is not progress perhaps we can call this as regress so Benjamin does revert inverts the Marxist historical materialism which was concerned with predicting a revolutionary future to assert that historical materialism's true task ought to be in the words of the political scientist Rolla Boehner to save the past so uh, Benjamin said that eventually 
uh, that history will eventually lead to revolution uh, will perhaps not be always true. And uh, we can of course see that uh, prediction of Benjamin has, uh, uh, has been true to some extent in case of the Russia and China. Now uh, another very important uh, event occurs in the 1991. It has led to the collapse of the Soviet communism, uh, the collapse of the country of the USSR, and it lead to us uh, to a turning point in Marxism. That is a very important word said uh, by Louis Althusser, another famous critic of Marxism, though he was a structuralist Marxist, the abandonment of economic determinism. Bhabe de Chinta, Marxism Kore Orthonity Kendrick de Chinta. Eventually, the base will influence the superstructure. The substructure will control the superstructure. A Chinta Bhavnateke, Beri Ashakota, Prothom Bullen, the famous Marxist philosopher Louis Althusser. And uh, until uh, the new left revival of the 1960s and 70s, revolution and social change had to come in practice from the mass industrial proletariat, but this system has failed. So the failure of the revolution in the West and the failure of the communism in the Eastern Europe came together to make transformation in the Marxist theory. Uh, inevitably, the Marxist theory, the framework of the Marxist theory also changed. And this is perhaps the pic you all recognize, the picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger from the Terminator movie, Terminator 2. Uh, uh, he is saying another influence was at work on almost all intellectual disciplines that seems as important as change in Marxism, that is, postmodernism. Postmodernism, which Frederick Jameson called as the cultural logic of late capitalism, Utto Radhunikota, Shetawi Marxist Chintai, Nana Dharoner, Puribortonante, Baddhukul. The Althusserian thinking now we uh, come to the famous structuralist Marxist philosopher Louis Althusser, who completely, who was a vigorous uh, critic of uh, the classical Marxism, and he introduced us to the uh, structural Marxist, to the school of the structural Marxism, and at the same time, uh, his uh, conception of Marxism was radically different from any other Marxist. So we'll read Althusser uh, in the next lecture. So thank you. In this lecture, I have discussed uh, 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 Walter Benjamin's idea, his critique of historical materialism. I have discussed also Herbert Marcuse and Max Horkheimer. So this is the second and the last lecture of the Frankfurt School. Thank you. See you in the next lecture on Louis Althusser.